So let's start with the uh, last user case uh, focusing on the supervised classification example for uh, classifying uh, urban and non-urban areas with the use of Sentinel-2 dataset. Um, let's again have a look at the uh, description of the dataset and see what kind of information we can extract when using Sentinel-2 data. So in the data catalog, uh, we can see the ID that can be used to load, as well as, uh, again, information regarding the bands, scaling factors, wavelengths, which is really important when we would later calculate uh, the spectral indices. So it's um, important to know that, for example, we can see that the band 8 corresponds to a near-infrared uh, band. Also, when we scroll down, you can, and we can see also that uh, one of the bands, the QA60 band, uh, has some information regarding the cloud masks, which is again later used for masking cloudy pixels. Uh, if we look in the description of the data set, besides a basic description here, we could see also an example how the, the masking of the clouds uh, can be performed. Here you can see the function where from the image, from Sentinel-2 image, the QA60 band is selected and then the values uh, should be set to zero indicating the uh, for the flags that represent the cloud and Sirius, uh, it should be set to zero in order to uh, have the clear conditions. And later, using the map function, it is applied to our whole data set. The same structure we can see in our code. So in the code editor, when you open um, the script with the provided link, you will see similar structure. So we have our Sentinel-2 dataset filtered by, uh, again, time and location, as well as by the percentage of cloud cover. And then um, uh, the function to mask clouds is mapped, which is similar to the one seen in the examples. Uh, besides the um, cloud masking function, another function is also applied, which is called get and dig, get the um, spectral indices. And for this, you would you can see here that we are calculating three indices: NDVI, which stands for Normalized Difference Vegetation Index. And the BI, which stands for normalized difference bear index, and optionally here you can see also normalized difference water index. It is commented now, so when executing, uh, we will uh, not use this uh, this uh, spectral index, but later when um, uh, revising the uh, analysis, we can come back and then use also NDWI. But for now, we are using the NDVI, which uh, selects the uh, near infrared and red band and using the normalized difference function calculates the normalized difference in this. Similarly, the, uh, for normalized difference buildup index, we are using short wave infrared band. And again, in order to not mix between different indices, we rename the band name to NDPI just for the ease of use. Um, and yeah, so we map this function as well. Let's also add a print. And run the script. We can see here our image collection, which after filtering by uh, by date and time um, uh, and uh, by location, we have only 87 images selected. And if we look at a random image and in the bands and properties, we can see first all the spectral bands as well as we can see two additional bands representing NDVI and normalized difference buildup index. We can also see in the properties that we still have the time property. And these are similar for all the images in our image collection. We can also see the visualization for the study area. We can see that after the cloud cover, the image looks quite fine. And for our visualization here, we are using the mean. So basically from our 87 images, the mean was calculated and we can see the natural color composite uh, for this mean image. 
So as an input for the classifier in general, we can have uh, one image or several images. That can be um, an image from selected from our image collection, but we also can aggregate this data using different reducers, such as the one uh, used for the visualization in order to capture um, information regarding the period of time for a specific area. So here let's calculate the median and maximum values over the time. So here we can see using the uh, maximum uh, reducer and then the median reducer uh, in order to later use uh, as an input in our classification. Uh, and here we use just the advanced uh, function in order to um, add the calculated maximum uh, bands into this newly created um, image input which includes both the median and the maximum uh, and it includes all the spectral bands and the indices calculated. So lastly before moving to the classification example let's have a simple thresholding example which can also give us an idea regarding our input that we are using for the classifier. We already calculated NDVI and other indices, and for example, NDVI uh, is very sensitive to vegetation cover and the greenness. Um, those can be used to delineate, for example, uh, urban green areas, as well as to highlight the differences between uh, the green spaces and bare land, as the lower values of NDVI also uh, indicate the bare spaces. Uh, so here we can have a simple threshold to visualize on the higher values of NDVI and apply this threshold selecting the band which is ND, stands for NDVI, and uh, clip for the region of interest which is just clipping over the study area over Berlin and use a very simple visualization using just one color. This is the clipped example for our study area. And we could see that the green areas are quite well um, selected, highlighted, and uh, separated from um, urban areas. And we can see also that this can be a very nice input to our classifier. Similar thresholding can be applied also for other indices, so with uh, build-up index, um, we can um, uh, delineate on the build-up areas or with water index, water bodies uh, around the study area, but these uh, thresholds are um, somehow um, uh, different for different areas, so more automated methods for classification is preferred.